Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I will show you how to build a robot and this will include also the simple but powerful software to control this robot. Watch this video till the end if you want to learn how to implement inverse kinematics in your robot arm in a simple way. First we need motors and I'm going to use these three motors from the company which is called Simplex Motion. But everything what we are going to learn in this video is applicable for other robots and for other motors. So this is just an example. As a next step we need to learn how to use our motors. I have three models. Here you can see the parameters. The powerful one, the lightest and one in the middle. They are kind of expensive but they are not crazy expensive. For example this one in the middle it's $350. And why they are so expensive? because they already have the controllers over here. And it's very interesting that the controller is mounted on the side, not on the back as usual. And when we look at these motors, we don't see any encoder. And this is very strange because these motors, they allow fine position control, also the speed control and the torque control, as most of the controllers for the robotics. Like for example, on this my robot, there is a motor over here and there is encoder just at the back of the motor. And in case of these motors we don't see any visible encoders. Like usually it should be on the axis and uh, nothing on the axis. And the way how this controller works is very interesting. Actually it has two hole sensors over there. And these two hole sensors they detect the magnetic field from the magnets in the rotor. So this is very interesting technology. As far as I know, the Simplex Motion is the only company who produce the motors with this kind of controllers with the encoder on the side. And if I'm not mistaken, this is patented technology. To control this motor in torque position and speed mode, we need to use RS-485 serial communication. I never used RS-485 before, so I looked at the manual and I found out that we need to use RS-485 Modbus RTU interface. I found the parameters which we need to use for this Modbus communication. And afterwards I found out that how it works, that basically inside the controller there is a memory cells, which is called registers. So you can either read value or write value there. And there is a lot of different registers and I found the most interesting for me, like for example here there is two registers for the temperature measurements. There is registers here for the motor torque, motor speed. Also over here one for the motor position, acceleration. And over here probably the most important is the way how you control it. You can either control the position, position ramp, speed or torque. And over here you can set the target, so you can set either the target the one of the value in the register or you can set the target to be one of the input of this controller which is quite useful and thanks to this you can easily use these motors for the CNC to replace the stepper motors they even have the application note for this and they explain you how to program these motors in order to be controlled with the step and direction like stepper motors and this replacement will allow you for the higher torque for the closed loop control for the less vibrations because there is no steps. Just for fun over here I put stepper motors to compare and you see that they are really similar. Like for example this one is very similar to the NEMA 11. Size wise the same holes for the mounting. NEMA 17 and NEMA 23. So we need to communicate with RS-485. And for this I have this small board. USB to RS-485 converter. So this one we can connect to the computer and for the computer I'm going to use this piece of equipment. This is basically Jetson Xavier NX in this case with the screen. And instead of this module I'm going to use this one which is basically exactly the same. This is a power supply which is directly connected to this wire which goes to the motor. And the advantage of this board is that it has some switches which are connected to the inputs of the motor, of the motor controller. And there is also this variable resistor which is connected to the input number one. Let's start the test with the smallest motor because it's cute. As you can see the power is on. 
For the Modbus, we're going to use this module, Minimal Modbus. We need these four lines in order to set up proper connection. Also, we need to provide the access to the USB port. And afterwards, we basically need only two commands. One is to write register, another one is to read register. And for example, here in the command to write register, the first value is the register ID. So here the register ID is 400. It's actually one less than the real. This is the value which we write inside the register. And this zero is not really important. It's just uh, for the format. For example, the register 400, it's responsible for the different modes in which motor works, like position mode, torque mode, or speed mode. And now it's, it's the mode where it's just uh, stopped, kind of off, and you can rotate the motor freely, no problem. And now we can go to the position ramp mode. For this, we need to write to this register 21. And you see that motor, it holds its position. And now we can change the position by changing the register 451 and uh, register 450. Like, for example, we can go to the position 300 or position 3000. Or we can go back to the position zero. Or we can change the position by a lot by going to one at the register 450. And we can go back. And the temperature is 41 degrees, which I think perfectly fine. And if we put one in the register 452, this means that for the target position, it's going to look at the voltage at the first input of the controller. And you see with variable resistor, I can easily rotate this motor in one direction or another direction. Go forward, go backward. Cool. Let's put this register back to zero. And now I'm going to show you that my video about heavy robotics actuators was not useless. Because many of you said as heavy robotics actuators are very expensive, the video is useless. No. I will show you that with the heavy robotics uh, Python API, we can control almost any kind of motor, for example, this one. And to make everything even more fun, we go and do this using the application on the iPhone or any smartphone. And so the goal is to control this motor with the smartphone. And just in half an hour, I wrote this program. Actually, the entire program is almost fits in the screen. So now the most interesting part are in the screen. And let's see how it works. Run the program. And now with the joystick on the up, I can rotate in one direction and into another direction. And I even can rotate very slowly, like this. This is cool. This is super easy way to control your robot with a smartphone. If you can control one motor, you can control many motors. We have three motors, so we can make a very simple direct drive robot arm. Tiny, simple, ugly, but for test. And now we just need to solder all the wires, but I'm going to do this off camera because soldering is boring. I finished with the wiring and also I did some small code with inverse kinematic using Hebe Robotics Python module, Hebe Robotics API. So this is all the wiring. It's uh, quite simple. Basically, there is only power supply and RS-485. Over here, I also attached a small battery with LED. So let's run my small program. And now it's going to follow the cross, left and right. Let's run it again. So it goes to the zero position, afterwards it goes to the center, it goes down, center, up, center, right, center, left, center. And it goes back.
So this is view from the top. So we can check that it moves at the same plane. So it goes down, middle, up, down, right, left. And so we can easily see that all the motion was at the same plane. Now let's quickly look at the program. It looks long, but uh, it's not very long. It's uh, basically just several modules which repeats. Let's mainly look at the forward and inverse kinematics. In order to perform the forward and inverse kinematics, we need the model of our robot arm. This model is defined here. And we read this model from this file, hrdf file. So it's over here in the folder. I already open it over here. We basically have the robot. And inside this robot, we have several rigid bodies and joints. So this is the rigid body one and joint. So this rigid body is this part. The joint is the motor, so it's this joint. The second rigid body, this part with its motor, which is defined here. The third rigid body, this part, which is also has the motor defined in this joint and the last rigid body, which is this part. When we define this file, afterwards everything becomes very easy. And in order to perform the forward kinematics, we need to use just this one line, model.getEndEffector. And here we put the joint angles and at the output we have the position of the end effector. So x, y, z position of the end effector. And in order to perform the inverse kinematics, it's two lines. In the first line, we define the target position to which we want to go. And in the second line, we define the initial joint angle. So we define from which joint angle we go into this x, y, z position. And this gives us the angles for each joints. So this is super easy. One line for the forward kinematics and two lines for the inverse kinematics. The only thing that for the inverse kinematics, the steps with which you're moving, they should not be very big. Because if these steps are too big, in this case, there is several solutions how you can go from one step to another step. And so probably the solution which is given for you, the inverse kinematics, it's not the solution which you prefer. So it's better to go with the smaller steps. And now let's look at this hrdf file where we define our robot. And uh, at the beginning it looks complicated, but basically it's not complicated at all because mass and com we don't need because uh, we don't uh, do any dynamics here. So mass is the mass of the rigid body and this is center of mass, the position of the center of mass. We don't use it. And the only thing which we use is output translation and output rotation. So output translation is translation in x, y and z. And so I have here x, y and z. And I translate it by 122 millimeters. So it goes like this 122 millimeters. So it basically means that this, our reference frame, has the x in this direction, y in this direction, z in this direction. And the center of this frame is over here. And when I translate this frame 122 millimeters in the direction of z, I go from this point to this point. Afterwards, I define that our joint is in z direction. It rotates like this. Rotational z joint. The second rigid body. We go to the negative y. So we go negative y and positive z, positive z. So from this point, we went negative y, positive z, and we came to this point. I would like to have all the joints rotated around z. So we need to do also rotation of our frame 90 degrees around the axis x. And this is defined over here, output rotation around axis x pi over 2. And the same we repeat with other rigid bodies. So for example, here we go 8 centimeters. Our frame is now like this. We go 8 centimeters in the direction of the y to go from this point to this point. And we need to go that direction a little bit because this link is shifted to respect to this one. And it's taken into account over here. And the same we do for the last rigid body where we move our frame from this point to the tip. 
so we basically go upwards and also this tip is not symmetric I made this perfectly in order to make everything a little bit more complicated and all this taken into account with these three values today we have learned a lot of new things first of all we learned how to use simplex motion motors this is a really interesting motors with the controllers because they don't have the traditional encoder instead they have two hole sensors which detects the magnetic field from the rotor and like this they can determine the position of the rotor the drawback of this approach is that there is no absolute measurements of the angle but otherwise it works perfectly fine and i think it's perfect for the robotics because there is the position control the speed control and also torque control everything which we need and also these motors are made in the way to be the perfect replacement for the stepper motors so if you have the cnc with the stepper motors and you would like upgrade it with the brushless motors this is the easiest way to go second today we have learned how to use modbus rtu rs485 this is really a common communication protocol in the industrial applications so it's really nice to know how to use it and i'm sure it could be useful not only for me but also for you and the thought and maybe the most interesting thing today we have learned how to use heavy robotics python api python module in order to control our custom DIY robot, especially robot arm. And first of all, with this Python module, we can control our robot using the smartphone over the Wi-Fi. I think this is perfect and interesting solution. There is a lot of application for this. And the second, very interesting, is that with this module, we can easily do the forward and inverse kinematics. Today, we showed how to do this with the three degrees of freedom, but it's also possible in the same way to do the inverse kinematics for the six degrees of freedom robot arm and the example of this there is on the github page of the heavy robotics and they don't have only python api they also have the matlab api and c language api so if this is the languages which you prefer you can also use the modules in these languages instead of python module thank you for watching this video till the end don't forget to subscribe to my channel don't forget to put the like don't forget to put one or several comments for the YouTube uh, algorithm in order to promote this video. And also I would like to say a huge thank you to people who support my channel, here their names. This is the people from Patreon and from the YouTube channel membership. Thanks to them, I can continue to do this robotics and thanks to them, I can bring this video for you. Thank you a lot. Stay safe, good luck with your projects and see you next time.